Welcome back to class. Let's have a look at the outline. So we started with uh, chapter 12.1, explaining fluctuations within the IS model. We looked at different shocks, how they affect GDP in a negative way. And we asked the question whether an expansionary fiscal or monetary policy helps in order to cure the underlying problem. The underlying problem is low level of GDP and high level of unemployment. In the end, we also talked about the interactions between monetary and fiscal policy. And we learned that the effects of a fiscal policy also depend on the reaction of the central bank. Now, in part 12.2, I would like to talk about the ISLM model as a theory for aggregate demand. I would like to use the ISLM model in order to derive the aggregate demand curve. We'll focus on the slope of the aggregate demand curve and we will also look at what happens if there is a shock in the ISLM world, how is the demand curve affected, what shifts the demand curve to the left or to the right. In the end, I would also like to discuss one shock in uh, the ISLM world and the ASAD world. But uh, let's get started and derive the aggregate demand curve in the first place. So let's start here on slide number 17. Uh, in the left part, we have the ISLM model. In the beginning, it is the case that we are in scenario uh, one, the blue scenario. The price level is on the level P1 and the GDP level is on the level Y1. Therefore, it is the case that we can already insert one point in the right part of the diagram in case that the price level is on the level P1 goods demand is on the level Y1. Now we would like to find out what happens if the price level increases from P1 to P2. When the price level increases from P1 to P2, it is a case that this leads to a shock on the money market because of the fact that real money supply is affected. In case that the prices increase, real money de supply decreases. So M over P is real money supply. When the price level increases, M over P decreases, real money supply is down. This shifts the LM curve to the left or upwards, and we get a new equilibrium in the red dot. So it is a case that when the price level increases from P1 to P2, demand for goods decreases from Y1 to Y2. And hence we have a second point found for our demand relationship. And now we can combine the blue dot and the red dot and we can draw this aggregate demand curve. So based on the ISLM model, we are able to find the reason why the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. The aggregate demand curve is downward sloping because of the fact that an increase in the price level leads to a decrease in real money supply. And this leads to a decrease in demand for goods. Like on this slide, slide number 17, we derived the slope of the aggregate demand curve and it is indeed downward sloping. Until now, like in chapter 10, we were making this shortcut that we were arguing about the quantity theory of money. This is not the case anymore in chapter 11 or here in chapter 12. We can derive the negative slope of the aggregate demand curve from our ISLM model. In the next step, we would like to talk about shifts of the aggregate demand curve. 
In panel A, we can see in the left part of the diagram an expansionary monetary policy. The central bank is increasing money supply and therefore the LM curve shifts to the right. Uh, demand is on a higher level. So we learn here that the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. Demand increases in case that the central bank increases money supply. In the lower part of the diagram, it is a case that we learn what happens if the uh, government is increasing government spending. In the left part of the diagram, the IS curve shifts to the right. So an increase in government spending leads to an increase in demand from Y1 to Y2. And therefore, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. The aggregate demand curve shifts to the right from Y1 to Y2. So here we learn that changes which lead to a change of demand in the ISLM graph lead to a shift of the aggregate demand curve to the right or to the left in case that demand increases then it is a case that the demand curve shifts to the right in case that a contractionary monetary policy or a contractionary fiscal policy is implemented then the aggregate demand curve will shift to the left the next part um, is a little bit problematic in the textbook because i don't understand the textbook anymore so please do not read the subchapter, the ISLM model in the short run and the long run. And figure 12.7, uh, really, it doesn't make sense to me. Therefore, I would uh, like to come up with uh, one shock discussed in the ISLM and ASAD world simultaneously. I hope that you follow me and you are able to get how an analysis should take place. So I would like to use this diagram in order to analyze what happens if the government increases government spending in the short run and in the long run. In the lower part of this graph, I have the ISLM relationship and IS curve and LM curve are inserted in one diagram where we have the interest rate on the vertical axis and the GDP level on the horizontal axis. In the upper part of the diagram, we are working in a price the GDP diagram. And I have inserted here the downward sloping aggregate demand curve, the short run aggregate supply curve and the long run aggregate supply curve. When the government increases government spending, it is the case that in the lower part of the diagram, the IS curve is affected. The IS curve will shift to the right. So uh, from the lower part of the diagram, we get the information that demand will increase from the level A to the level B. This has to be considered in the upper part of the diagram. Demand increases by the distance from A to B. And therefore, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. The short run equilibrium is in point B. We always said that in the short run, the prices are sticky, the prices do not change. And this is what we see in this graph. PA is equal to PB. In the short run, the prices do not react. It is the case that demand increased from A to B, and so does also supply but only in the short run in the short run the companies are producing more and thereby it is the case that this demand is also uh, filled and the economy ends up in a kind of boom situation but in the longer run it's a case that the prices are not sticky, the prices can change and there is an upward pressure on the goods prices. This is what we can see in the upper part of the diagram. 
Why is it the case that the prices increase here? We are in scenario B, and in scenario B, the unemployment rate is pretty, pretty low. The economy is in a boom. And therefore, it will be the case that on the labor market, there is also an excess demand for labor and the wages start to increase. When the wages increase, then a cost factor on the side of the companies increases and the companies will start to increase the prices. The prices increase several times until we reach the new long-run equilibrium in point C. Uh, we can see here that in the upper part of the diagram, the prices increased. What happens in the lower part of the diagram? When the prices increase, we know that real money supply decreases, which leads to a shift of the LM curve to the left. The LM curve shifts to the left, and therefore in the lower part of the diagram, we can observe that the interest rate increases from the level IB, which was the prevailing interest rate level in the short run equilibrium, to the level IC. And when the interest rate increases, demand for investment goods decreases, and this leads to the contraction of uh, the demand in the lower part of the diagram. So the increase in the interest rate contracts the demand for investment goods, and therefore in the new long-run equilibrium, we are on the same level in YC compared to YA. So we are in the new long-run equilibrium on the same GDP level as uh, we started with. In the upper part of the diagram, we have to consider that when we stay in point C, in the scenario C for a longer time period, then also the short run aggregate supply curve will shift upwards. There is a new short run aggregate supply curve because now the prices are once more sticky in the short run, but on a higher level. I think that this diagram really makes sense. It makes sense to me. What happens in the short run? What happens in the long run? Uh, we discussed the effects of uh, an increase in government spending that in the short run, more or less like the ISLM model is valid. But in the long run, the results from the classical models hold. So an increase of government spending in a classical model leads just to an increase of the interest rate and does not affect the GDP level in the long run. So we are able to combine the short run approach of Keynes and the long run approach of the classical theory. This is a very important insight. So I also would like to give you some time to digest I'll stop here and start again with another video.